special test that we're going to be doing for the thigh, hip, and pelvis is going to be for uh, hip injuries, hip tests. The first hip test that we're going to be is called the Patrick test. Uh, some people also refer to it as the Patrick Faber test. It's Faber is all caps, F-A-B-E-R. Uh, for this, we're going to have the patient in a supine position um, with his legs extended. Um, and then uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have the person uh, flex the hip. They're going to um, abduct it and uh, externally rotate it. Okay, that's your um, F for Faber. AB is for abduction. And then your uh, external rotation is your R for a rotated. So what ends up happening is your foot is opposite foot is going to be on the on the knee. So we're testing this this uh, hip. Um, then the, the athletic trainer is going to stand lateral to the patient. Uh, usually at knee level, places uh, one hand is going to be over the the knee, uh, and the other hand is going to be on the opposite hip to um, stabilize it. And then what we're going to, the hip and the pelvis. Then what we're going to be doing is applying a downward pressure uh, to the knee. Uh, and uh, this uh, thus extending the hip. And a positive sign uh, would be if the injured limb uh, cannot abduct before level. Um, level of the good limb if we compare this uh, bilaterally. Uh, this would be a positive indication for um, issues with the SI joint, with the hip pathology, or the iliopsoas muscle. Special test that we're going to be doing for the hip is called the hip scoring test. It's also called the quadrant test. Um, and for this one, again, we're going to have the patient in a supine position. Uh, with the legs extended uh, off the table. Uh, the athletic trainer or therapist is going to be on the side. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to um, completely flex the knee and, and flex the hip at the same time. This is passive. And then what I'm going to do, uh, uh, hold in the, the distal leg um, as well as the um, uh, cupping the heel, okay, uh, or the distal leg, either, either one is fine. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be applying a uh, downward pressure uh, on the femur uh, in this direction uh, as it compresses the joint surfaces. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting uh, I can adjust the hip flexion in different degrees of flexion if I want to. But I'm also going to be, um, uh, add, while I'm applying the downward pressure, I'm also going to be uh, doing, uh, I'm going to be uh, adducting the hip and internally uh, rotating uh, the tibia, uh, the hip rather, internally rotating the hip. Uh, and, and I'm going to look for any pain or, or, or apprehension in that position. And then I'm going to um, abduct the hip and um, externally rotate uh, the hip. And again, I'm going to apply my uh, downward pressure. And again, look again for any pain or apprehension during that test. Again, we can do this at various degrees of hip flexion. Okay. And. Um, Usually, if, if this, this pain, a positive test, is indicative of uh, arthritis, uh, it's also uh, avascular uh, necrosis or uh, acetabular labrum um, deficiencies. Special test that we're going to be doing is called the Craig's test. Uh, in another textbook, this is referred to as the measure, measuring the angle of torsion, angle tor of torsion at the hip. Uh, for this one, we're going to have the patient in a prone position, and we're going to uh, flex the knee uh, 90 degrees. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, we are also going to need a, a goniometer for this one. 
and what we're going to do is we are going to um, standing lateral to the patient's uh, hip uh, we're going to uh, palpate the greater uh, trochanter and now what we're going to do is we're going to um, internally uh, and externally uh, rotate uh, the leg until the uh, greater trochanter is parallel to the floor um, with the table okay and then once it once it is I'm going to have to ask you to hold it in that position and then we're going to go down uh, and again with our goniometer uh, we're going to have our um, the long axis is going to be uh, along the um, uh, the, fem the tibia and the stationary arm is going to be uh, parallel uh, to the floor, parallel to the table. And then um, uh, and, there, and what we're looking for is we're looking to see if uh, th their angle, that angle is greater than 15 degrees. That would indicate a femoral anterversion. Um, or it also, you may also see the uh, toeing in or squinting patella. If that angle is less than 8 degrees, that would indicate uh, femoral retroversion. Uh, thus, uh, you may see the toeing out position. Uh, if the angle is greater than 20 degrees, it's also indicated that may also be uh, introversion as well of the uh, femoral. That's it.